Uh, welcome all uh, to the National Capital Planning Commission's October 4th meeting. For all in attendance, please uh, note that today's meeting is being live streamed on the web uh, on the ncpc.gov uh, website. We do have a quorum, so if there's no objection, we will uh, proceed with the um, agenda that has been publicly advertised. Agenda item number one is the report of the chairman, and I have two uh, items to note. First, I'm pleased to welcome uh, Sally Barnes. Sally is the executive director of Australia's National Capital Authority, uh, the equivalent uh, of NCPC uh, in the uh, capital city of Canberra. She's obviously visiting us from Canberra. There she is. Um, she has spent uh, a couple of days with us. Um, I had the pleasure of spending about two hours with her last night, and it's amazing that challenges are the same the world over. Um, we've had an excellent opportunity uh, to share uh, the challenges and the strengths of our capital uh, cities. Second, uh, I'll note that uh, this morning commissioners had an opportunity to visit the National Law Enforcement Museum, which is set to open to the public uh, later this month, mid-October. Um, so I want to thank uh, Davis Buckley and Craig Floyd for the tour. It uh, gave us an excellent opportunity to see um, what's going on at the museum, and uh, we encourage you to uh, follow its progress and visit it uh, when it's open. It's, it's terrific. Um, agenda item number two is report of the executive director, Mr. Costa. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, and also welcome uh, to Ms. Barnes. Uh, we invite the commission and general public to attend a special event at NCPC on Tuesday, October 16th at 6.30 p.m. Uh, we're welcoming uh, Helen Marriage, uh, founding director of Artichoke, a London-based arts charity that specializes in large-scale public art uh, events and spectacles. Uh, the session will be moderated by Sakina Khan, Deputy Director of the D.C. Office of Planning, our colleague. And for further information on RSVP, go to ncpc.gov, and you also have a copy of the invitation there. She's quite interesting. I hope you're able to attend uh, the session. We also welcome <coughs> Linda uh, ramirez Blust, who unfortunately could not attend today's meeting because of class. Uh, she will focus on the monumental core streetscape project, and she also is a graduate student in landscape architecture at Virginia Tech. And finally, we wish all the best to urban planner Michael Bayo, who has returned to his hometown of Miami. Michael worked on our Pennsylvania Avenue Initiative and more recently our continuing work on small cell infrastructure, which, by the way, will be on next month's commission agenda. So you'll have a lot to work <laughs> with next month. Uh, so we wish him all the best and thank him for his service to the commission. Thank you. Any questions for Mr. Acosta? Agenda item number three is the legislative update and general counsel on Ms. Schuyler. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have one item that I would like to report, uh, H.R. 6672, which is known as the Republic of Te Texas Legation Memorial Act, was introduced. I'll give you a little history in a moment, Mr. Chairman, so you can <laughs> give it, stop that asking look at me. But it's a bill to authorize the Daughters of the Republic of Texas to establish the Republic of Texas Legation Memorial on federal land in the district. So to refresh your knowledge of Texas history and to place this memorial in context, you need to remember that from 1836 to 1845, Texas was an independent country known as the Republic of Texas. As such, it sent diplomatic re representatives to Washington, D.C. and had what was known as a legation, Texas legation. The proposed memorial would recognize the contribution of the Texas delegation to make possible the annexation of Texas by the United States so that Texas entered as the 28th state. The bill authorizes the memorial to be in the form of a plaque with an inscription recognizing the legation, and it also requires the establishment of the memorial to comply with the requirements of the Commemorative Works Act. I'll refrain from comment. So. Uh, any questions from Ms. Schuyler on, on the legislative we'll report? From comment. Okay. Uh, thank you, Ms. Schuyler. Uh, agenda item number four is the consent calendar, and we have two items. Item 4A is the approval of preliminary and final site development plans for the temporary relocation and replacement of a radio communications tower at the National Zoo, and that is brought to us by the Smithsonian Institution. Item 4B is, appro is approval of preliminary and final site development plans with comments for an antenna installation on the Department of Agriculture's South Building in Washington, D.C., and that's brought to us by uh, GSA. Um, any questions on any of those two items? 
Hearing none, uh, it's been moved and Second. seconded that we approve the consent calendar as is. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. It's unanimous. Thank you. <clears> the <throat> first item on the agenda is item 5A, and that's to approve comments on the concept plans for the National World War I Memorial to be located at Pershing Park. It comes to us by way of the National Park Service. We have Mr. Fliss. Welcome. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Chairman, members of the commission. Um, as mentioned, the National Park Service, in collaboration with the World War I Centennial Commission, has submitted revised concept plans for the National World War I Memorial. The commission, uh, the World War I Commission, is the project sponsor of the memorial and is also responsible for planning, developing, and executing programs, projects, and other activities to commemorate the centennial of World War I. NCPC provided comments on the concept design in November of 2016 and then most recently in July of 2017, uh, just over a year ago. And since that time, the proposal has continued to be developed. Congress has designated Pershing Park, which is located in downtown Washington, D.C., as the site of the memorial. A two-stage competition was helped, uh, held to select the memorial designer. And the winning design, The Weight of Sacrifice, by Joseph Weishar and sculptor Sabin Howard, was selected by the World War I Centennial Commission. So just as a reminder, Pershing Park is located in downtown Washington, D.C., uh, shown here on the screen. It's bounded by Pennsylvania Avenue on the north and south, and 15th and 14th Streets to the west and to the east. The park is located in an important civic and symbolic corridor, uh, which of course links the White House and the U.S. Capitol. The site is uh, highlighted here in orange. The park is also within the Pennsylvania Avenue Historic Site, which is also an area of numerous historic and cultural resources as well as a resurgent downtown. So here is an image of the park. Uh, the site is surrounded on the north by commercial uses, including several hotels with the Willard you can see here in the background. Parks and open spaces include the Sherman Memorial, as well as Freedom Plaza, which are found to the west and to the east. Civic uses, including the Commerce Building and the Wilson Building, are located to the south. You may recall in, uh, in terms of history, in 1979, the PADC commissioned landscape architect uh, M. Paul Friedberg and Jerome Lindsay to design Pershing Park. Under Friedberg, the park was imagined as a shaded refuge with a waterfall and sunken water feature that transformed into an ice rink in the winter. The park design reflected a desire for seclusion from the noisy streets which uh, surrounded the site. In addition, a memorial to General Pershing uh, was also integrated into the park plan. So here you can see a view to the west um, when the uh, water feature and the, west, and the pool were in operation. This is looking towards the, the western steps. The park was dedicated in 1981, and it was recently determined individually eligible for listing in the National Register of Historic Places. So given this uh, important historic context, the, the park's location within the broader framework of Pennsylvania Avenue, as well as its uh, position as an urban park within the fabric of an active downtown, the commission has previously expressed support for several planning and urban design principles. Um, these include supporting a memorial design that combines urban park and commemorative features successfully, also supporting a memorial design that respects the symbolic and civic importance of the Pennsylvania Avenue corridor, and then finally supporting strategies that enhance Pershing Park while still rehabilitating or reusing elements of the original park design. So with that as a background, um, I'm going to walk you through the revised design and also the staff recommendations. I'm going to focus on three major components uh, highlighted here, including the memorial wall, the pool and pathways, and then finally park use and programming. So I think it's helpful to frame uh, this analysis by first making two points. Uh, first, the memorial design has changed substantially uh, since the competition was uh, winner was selected uh, back in early 2016. The proposal has moved from one that changed much of the park fabric to one that is focused on restoring and rehabilitating much of the original design. And then secondly, it's a, I think it's everyone's intent to improve the existing park, and overall we believe this will be beneficial to Pennsylvania Avenue as well as the surrounding area. And as such, staff does recommend the commission find the park and memorial improvements can enhance Pennsylvania Avenue corridor experience and also contribute positively to an active downtown Washington. 
So here you can see on the, uh, on the screen in front of you the, um, the scheme the Commission last reviewed in July of 2016. Again, in this approach, um, they restored much of the park and also proposed a memorial wall integrated into the western steps of the uh, pool, which is uh, shown here, you can see on the right, kind of in the background. The memorial wall placement and design in that concept reinterpreted the location of Friedberg's original waterfall, which you saw an image of earlier. It also expanded it across the western terrace steps. This approach allowed for a clear front of the memorial facing the pool, uh, where it would be approached and viewed by the public. And then by integrating the wall into the terrace, it also allowed for the creation of an overlook at the upper level that would allow uh, visitors to stop and, and kind of look over the plaza. The new design, which is uh, shown here in plan, no longer integrates the memorial wall into the western terrace. And instead, the future is a standalone element um, that's placed within the pool uh, on the western end, and that's uh, circled here in orange. This revision uh, resulted from additional discussions with both consulting parties, as well as the Commission of Fine Arts, who gave concept approval to the design uh, earlier in July. So here's another view of the proposed freestanding wall. Again, the design still includes a sculptural component on the west, oh, I'm sorry, on the eastern face, but it also adds a water feature and potential inscription on the western side. I will note that the sculptor has worked to reduce the size and the length of the memorial wall as shown in these diagrams. This was a request previously by the commission. The design also now includes an option for water at the base. Um, this again is consistent with the commission's previous request to integrate some kind of water feature. So by moving the memorial wall into the pool, it does become a feature that can be seen from multiple viewpoints. The eastern face and sculpture is still intended to be the primary view. However, the standalone wall does create this other face that will be visible and must be treated appropriately. So here you can see, again, a view of that, that western side of the freestanding wall. As I mentioned, the applicant has proposed an inscription as also as a water feature on this side. But staff is unclear at this point whether this will be sufficient to create a space that is going to be attractive to visitors or comfortable to occupy. We know from, from other experience, including the existing Pershing walls, that uh, walls can create challenges by blocking views and being perceived as barriers. Um, if this freestanding approach uh, is continued to advance, it should be designed holistically. As such, staff recommends the commission find that the freestanding wall in its current design creates a clear front and a back, and the space at the rear of the wall is not yet fully developed. We also recommend that the applicant provide alternative design strategies that treat the memorial element in a more unified manner without a true front or back so that it's not perceived as dividing the park but can engage visitors from all sides. So moving on, with, as with the previous design which you saw, the current uh, proposal includes rehabilitating the central plaza and the pool and also adding a pedestrian path that would allow visitors to circulate in front of the memorial uh, wall. The applicant has provided three um, options, which are shown here, regarding the path alignment and the pool design. And as with other aspects of this uh, project, of course, um, the options attempt to weigh functionality, programming, as well as historic preservation concerns. So the first option includes an L-shaped uh, walkway. This does retain the existing pool depth, which is about a foot, uh, a foot deep. And this design most closely retains the original pool depth as well as the um, general footprint while providing this new pedestrian connection between the eastern and northern portions of the plaza. This additional connection may be beneficial by, by providing visitors a new route that passes by the memorial. So here you can see that, that same uh, proposal in an aerial view with the L-shaped uh, walkway passing in front of the proposed uh, memorial. <laughs> The second option also includes an L-shaped walkway. Um, however, in this case, there is a 16-inch deep pool along the outside of the L, and a proposed scrim, uh, or a very kind of shallow uh, water uh, sheet, on the inside. The introduction of this scrim, uh, scrim retains the general footprint of the pool again, but it does alter the depth of the water in this particular location. Because the scrim would be flush with the plaza, um, it would also allow um, programming 
if the water was turned off and it was in a dry state. So here again is that same view. Again, this looks very similar to the previous option, but in this case, that inside portion of the L is actually a scrim, which is very shallow uh, water. So the third option um, changes the configuration of the pedestrian path. So in this case, it's a U shape, again, with a deeper water around the perimeter and a scrim of water on the inside. At this point, the applicant has indicated that this is their preferred approach. The pedestrian path, again, starts and finishes on the eastern side of the central plaza. And because of this configuration, more area is devoted to the walkway. As with the previous option, again, in this case, the scrim could be turned off and used for uh, potential programming. So again, here's that same scheme in an aerial view. And then here's a, a rendering showing how that scrim area could be used for, for events in the future. To better understand how the trade-offs between all these options, staff does recommend that the commission request that for each of them, the applicant describe how the water feature in the plaza area would be used throughout the year. And this is an example for one of them. We also want them to recognize the differences in temperature and, and other climatic conditions through the summer and winter months. We'll also note that with, as with many water features in Washington, D.C., the pool will probably be empty for, for uh, some period of time, and this can also influence how the space feels and functions. I'll also note that the original um, early design for Pershing Park also included a variety of plantings in and near the pool, and the opportunity exists to incorporate these kinds of plantings to help soften the hardscape and also improve the visitor experience. The applicant does continue to work on a number of details, uh, which will continue to be developed prior to any final approval by the commission. Uh, these include how the new pass will meet the plaza level as well as the, uh, water. I'll also note that the applicant has uh, indicated they're continuing to work with the National Park Service to address issues related to safety as well as fall protection. <coughs> And any such me measures, if they are necessary, should be included in future submissions to the Commission. The submission also includes several other components uh, with, alternatives op with alternative options under consideration. For example, a flagstaff is proposed in several uh, locations. And the former pavilion site, which is kind of on the bottom right-hand part, part of the image here, is also identified as a potential site for interpretive elements. In general, staff finds the North Berm appropriate for a flagpole, given its location just to the right of the memorial. We also find that the former pavilion or kiosk site is an appropriate location for interpretive elements related to the memorial because of its visual connection to the memorial wall, as well as its centralized location within the uh, park. The applicant has also identified some potential locations for other commemorative uh, components, which are not yet fully described. Regarding these elements, staff does believe that they are unnecessary and would detract from the rest of the uh, use of the rest of the site as an urban park. As I've described previously, the site should accommodate both park and memorial components, and expanding the memorial program across the entire site could be counter to that goal. As such, staff recommends the commission find that the commemorative elements should largely be limited to the memorial wall, the kiosk area, and the existing Pershing Memorial to help highlight their importance and also allow for other types of park uses across the site. So now moving on to programming. Uh, accommodating park activities, as I mentioned, is critical to the success of the site. And this is evidenced by nearby examples such as the Navy Memorial, which functions in a variety of ways. Pershing Park is located in a thriving downtown near hotels and other commercial and civic uses. And given its location, the memorial has the opportunity to attract and engage a variety of visitors. It can be a destination for residents, office workers, as well as those uh, seeking the memorial, if it is designed in an appropriate way. Previously, the commission requested the applicant provide information about how the site would continue to function as an urban park, as well as potential programming or activities that could occur on, on the site. This request seeks to first understand the locations where park activities could occur uh, throughout the site, and then secondly, to understand what kind of park uses might be reasonable and appropriate near the memorial from the applicant's perspective. Uh, we still believe this is very important and recommend the commission require a plan be prepared that, ident that identifies the propo proposed urban park spaces and potential programming or activities that could occur in those spaces. 
Views and visibility into the park, um, in particular the connections to the south, have been raised previously as an issue uh, for further consideration. The Commission in July of 2017 requested the applicant provide alternatives to improve pedestrian access from the side of the park. While the applicant has not provided um, any additional evaluation at this time, we, we also recognize that the berm um, and the sense of topography on the south side of the park is part of the park's original design. However, given the changing context um, and the need to create a place that will attract visitors, we believe enhancing pedestrian access would be beneficial um, for, this, for this side of the site. Possible approaches could include highlighting the existing entry points with landscaping, signage, or other elements. This could help provide visual clues for visitors who might not be aware that there's a memorial or even a park space here. So as such, staff recommends the commission uh, require the applicant provide some design options uh, as part of the next mission that improve the sense of entry at uh, both the southeast and southwest corners of the site. And then finally, uh, past reviews have noted that the existing Pershing walls are hard to read, and you can see them here in this image. Uh, we still recommend that um, continued uh, consideration of improvements to these uh, walls, to their legibility, and we uh, recommend the Commission request additional information to be provided describing any proposed enhancements that could help improve that uh, reading of the memorial. And therefore, it is the Executive Director's recommendation that the Commission uh, note that the design of the memorial and park has changed over time to restore and re rehabilitate a substantial portion of the park, finds that the improvements can enhance uh, Pennsylvania Avenue and support an active downtown, finds the wall length has been reduced and a water feature has been integrated into the design consistent with your previous requests, finds the freestanding wall creates a back that's not yet fully developed and uh, requests the applicant continue to develop design alternatives that treat the wall in a unified way. Regarding the pool and the walkway, uh, finds that three alternatives have been developed. I request the applicant describe how the water feature and plaza area will be used throughout the year. Notes that the original pool design included additional planting and that the applicant will continue to work with the Park Service to address safety issues as appropriate. Regarding park use, the Commission requests a plan that shows how the urban park spaces will be used and programmed, requires the applicant provide design options to enhance the sense of entry um, at the south and so uh, southwest and southeast corners of the park, finds the commemorative elements should generally be limited to the memorial wall, kiosk, and Pershing Memorial to highlight their importance, and requests additional information about how the existing Pershing walls can be improved. That concludes my presentation. Uh, we do have representatives from the World War I Centennial Commission, uh, their design team, of course, the Park Service, also available to answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Fliss, very much. Uh, members of the design team and such, does anyone have any, do you have any uh, comments you'd like to offer or just, or just be available for questions? We're available for questions. Okay, yeah, great, thank you. Um, questions or comments from the Commission? Mr. Gallus. You're going to make me go first, huh? Yeah. Okay. Hi. Uh, thank you, Mr. Fliss. Um, I, I'm going to start with some positive things. Um, this is a very important memorial, I think. Its, it's location is amazing. Um, the views um, up and down Pennsylvania Avenue are really important, and um, I just see it as a, a, a very strategic placement for a very important memorial. My grandfather was a World War I veteran, uh, wounded in World War I. So I, I take this very, very personally in this way. Um, I, I like the new waterfall design. Uh, I think that the introduction of the scrim is uh, also kind of brilliant to sort of help uh, so both understand that, that the water was an important part of the original design, yet now it's no longer an ice skating rink. I used to ice skate on this site, so I, I know what that was about. Um, and, uh, and yet uh, it's clear that that has not proven to be uh, a productive use of the space as it might have originally been envisioned. And so the scrim is a sort of homage to that and seems like, I think, a, a very nice uh, notion. 
I also like the U shape um, from sort of, you know, in terms of how it frames the memorial wall. I think it really sets up uh, a viewer coming from the south entering this great urban space uh, to say, come look at me, come understand what what this memorial wall is the story it's trying to tell. So I think uh, I think that's definitely an improvement. And I, I like that we introduced the waterfall into the wall, which I think was something we all talked about and, and uh, a, a nice blend of past reference to the original design and I think uh, another in invitation to come view the wall. Um, my I think where I want to start to have some questions is about the approach to the wall from the west and also the approach to the plaza from the south. Um, I had these same comments at the first time we reviewed this. Um, I've walked those stairs. They're not friendly to inviting any pedestrian to use them. They're uneven in terms of the uh, tread uh, width. Um, and I realized that this was a place that was designed before really accessibility was a focus. So we're, at, we're in a different context today than we were when uh, Mr. Freeberg designed this originally. But if you'd go to your slide where you show the west side of the freestanding wall. I, I think I'm not sure what. Yeah. There, that one. No, thank you. Um, so the challenge. This is a very lovely uh, image. Except the challenge to get to where you could sit, where that person is sitting, or where those people are standing, is that you may just break your ankle getting there. And, and, and I'm not exaggerating. Um, we're used to uh, standards of stair risers and, and, uh, and uh, what's, what's uh, tread. Sorry, I <laughs> drew blank for a second. And unfortunately, this doesn't have it. And so while I understand that this is this notion of reusing the original elements, which was one of the main goals <clears throat> as stated in your introductory remarks, I really think uh, we're doing too much work for what isn't working in this memorial. And when we ask ourselves, why is this a place that no one knows about in Washington? We have to say that part of it is because it doesn't invite you to come there. And I know accessibility is an important focus of the current design, but I do think not only this west side, but the south side, possibly even more so, the south side uh, really becomes a uh, inhibitor to the use of the space. And I wonder, I realize that there is this, um, you're trying to walk the balance or tension between historic preservation and uh, sort of what the new vision for this memorial and, and urban park would be, but how do we balance this in a way that's that's going to make this a memorial that is going to be as beloved as the other ones in Washington that are that are highly visited by millions and millions of people every year? And I guess I'd love to hear any comments the design team may have on that. Greetings. My name is David Rubin. I'm principal of Land Collective. We are the landscape architects that have been brought on to the project to facilitate many of the challenges that you're citing. Um, it's my pleasure to uh, respond to uh, the comments and concerns. Uh, first, I would note that the entire park has been recognized as the memorial. Um, and so our goal is actually to try to do just that balancing act between uh, the preservation of a significant modernist architecture, uh, landscape architect, uh, 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 oeuvre and uh, assist in the uh, expression of an incredibly powerful moment in human history, uh, which is the rep uh, representation of the conflict of World War I, which involves so many nations and uh, so much of the United States. Um, 
I, I think that the challenges uh, are still uh, exist in the context of accessibility. You're correct in that it was constructed at a time uh, when uh, uh, universal accessibility was not the norm. Um, we are preserving uh, all approaches along Pennsylvania, which is uh, uh, the at-grade condition, if you will, um, and uh, enhancing and easing uh, where transition needs to take place due to, to topographic change. Um, I'm not sure that this design would be um, constructed the way it was uh, um, when it came in. So with the benefit of almost 40 years of experience here, and we can ask, what is it that to go try to um, move through those stairs? Maybe there are ways to create pathways that would um, sort of change the pattern of the stairway without changing all of it. That could be something as a suggestion. Maybe there's a berm. There's something else that allows people to navigate pedestrians to come and read. If you're going to put something on that wall, let me read it or let me enter from the, the, um, uh, west. the west side in order to be able to do that. Or also <clears throat> let me enter you know, from the south side. Uh, in a way that allows me to do that. <clears throat> I'm going to get off of that. I have a couple quick more things. Um, the pool depth. So I thought I read that the pool depth today is 12 inches, right? And yet we're going to 16 in some areas. And I'm Rounds two sides of the existing pool and bring participants off coplanar with that. Yeah. Um, at the same time, trying to define a scrim um, and meet uh, and work with the parameters of being uh, conscious of the original profile of the pool or plan of the pool relative to its embrace of the park or the, the park embracing it. Um, so we are moving up and down in the context of what that depth can and should be relative to where the individual perceives the monument, relative to movement from one one elevation to another, and whether it should be coplanar or not. So that's why you see multiple iterations here where we're exploring whether there's a descent associated with it. And I apologize, I have to look this way to see better. Um, where uh, the lower left version shows uh, a participant descending slightly to get to the existing condition of the level of water versus um, the coplanar condition uh, on the right side where we're interested in having the participant come right off of the existing elevation uh, to engage the, the mm -hmm. figurative memorial. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> it is not determined that's actually the nature of the next exploration uh, that we've been doing to come to a solid resolution on that. Gotcha. Okay. Well, I, that sounds, I can't wait to hear how I you, hope that wasn't too complicated. No, so. I think in your capable hands, Mr. Rubin, uh, this will be, this will get worked out. I guess my last comment has to do with the plantings. Uh, could you show, maybe just plan, uh, and I, maybe the plan is not literal, but uh, that one was okay. I, I plan, this is fine. Um, so one of the things that I understand didn't work about the current, the old fountain, is that maintenance became a real issue. And um, so, as I look at all the plantings, particularly as they approach the pools, right, and trees lose leaves, and where will those leaves, the gravity takes them down into what will be this pool. And when I, uh, when I look at this, and then I almost, you know, I think also some of the other imagery that's shown, um, you know, in some respects, are we, are we trying to create a forest around the pool and you know there's a question of how inviting does this become if it's too much of a forest I love trees don't get me wrong but I, I also wonder if trees adjacent immediately adjacent to the pool are so wise given the maintenance issues associated with that um, so I want to uh, if I can explain a couple of uh, make a couple of responses to the singular question. Uh, one of the goals of the of the 
uh, of the team is to refurbish the park into something that uh, is uh, reverential to the event that is being celebrated, but also um, recognizes that it is a significant civic component of the fabric of Washington, D.C. So the users will be varied, and their experiences will be varied. Um, the uh, One of the things that we're striving to do in the refurbishment of it, uh, because it was built at a time when soil sciences were not as advanced, and the understanding of the, the relationship of soil volumes to biomass um, was not as understood, we're trying to work with that. We're also reducing the number of trees from its original intent in collaboration with Umi van Sweden, who were the original horticulturists for, uh, that followed Freebird. Um, so, and we're also reducing the number of trees associated with the berm because they're not being supported by the volume of soil that exists there. So the, the, uh, I hope that we'll be able to show you in a future representation that we've been good stewards of the balance between uh, uh, usable programmable space and uh, <coughs> tempering climate in the context of a warm city during the summer. Thank you. You're welcome. Quick question. Where is the bulk of the water engineering system? the pumps and such. Can, am I allowed to point? Is it better yeah. to? Um, so uh, I'm pointing to uh, where the water system is located. Uh, it's in the northern portion of the western berm has vaults underneath it yep. that uh, we're working with a, uh, an engineer to figure out the full extent that's going to be required to uh, make it a functioning, viable pool once again. Thank you. I thought that's where they probably were. But. Its final location has not been determined that I... Sure. Yeah. Definitely. Other questions or comments on the concept? Yes, that's right. Um, I have two things. Um, so I, I, I'm, I'm interested in the west end of the, of the park and <clears throat> and um, what seems to be um, a, a bifurcation um, of purpose, which probably some people are critical of, but I want to advocate for it. And, and the reason I do is because I think to Mr. Gallus's point, I'm not sure that there. I, I I'm not sure that there aren't too many trees um, at the at the western end to to um, create a space that's recreational, not necessarily contemplative. Uh, a little bit uh, um, less directly, obviously, related to the whole memorial experience because, and, and that feels appropriate to me. I've commented before, <clears throat> while I don't think it's in the task that you've been given to, to sort of mash up a memorial in an urban park is impossible, it's darn hard. And, and I think you're really close. Um, I don't, I don't at all mind um, the even the idea of leaving that wall blank um, if you come to it because I think it's hard to be in it would be difficult to 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 recreate in a in a memorial park that, that where is, there's a relentless insistence that you think about these things and that's the mm -hmm. purpose of it but i also think that this is a, a the the place that this park is located in the city is pretty relentless in terms of green space if you have a half an hour to have lunch and i think it's okay to leave it to let the west end of of the site be not unfettered by a mo by memorial elements, but absent them and and accommodate that. If that's if that's what happens, then I would think about a few fewer trees. Um, so that's one thing. Um, and then the 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 thing that I can I I still I understand that the U shaped walkway is the is the applicant's preference but i would still try to talk you out of it because it 
it there's something about the approach i mean it's it's one thing to approach the 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 memorial narrative and hang a right it doesn't feel i i i don't know what it is whether it's because well we don't always read right to left do we <laughs> but anyway uh the uh it, it feels a more natural way to approach and linger when when you are at it went and then you'd be headed out the 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 you configuration seems to me to subconsciously trip some notion that my time is limited and I've got to to finish the motion and head on out. And I can't explain that mm. rationally why I think that is so. I but I I adamantly do. Um, <laughs> Um, you have every I just right think to do that. It's the way we are, we move. We we make a lot of a, a series of unconscious decisions all the time, and and the idea of having to to make another right hand turn um, feels something um, feels it, it insinuates some emergent uh, no some urgency that I don't think it, you want to. In, or I would infer some urgency that I don't think you want to imply. Um, and I had one more thing, but you know, I'm middle-aged and I forgot. So I'm not going to pretend like I remember what it was. <laughs> if it comes back to me, I will say something. You have a marker. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but I do want to. <laughs> this isn't it. In case I don't remember again, I, I I'm just want to say, down, by the way, I know so. this has been a struggle, and I think it's been worth it because it's really, you're, I, I think you're really close, and it's, and it's not been an easy job. So thank you for hanging Can I there. say thank you to you for just that comment? That was greatly appreciated, <laughs> and I'm sure that the team also appreciates that comment. Um, to the notion of the trees on the west, I um, and please don't hold me to the exact percentage, but I believe um, within the berms specifically, it's almost a one-third reduction based on the soil science and tree growth issue. So um, I encourage you to um, hold your thought and to the next presentation, we may be able to um, satisfy your concerns about that. Um, in the context of um, the that sort of issue of bifurcation, it's exactly what we're striving for, which was when Friedberg created that uh, the park, it was about space making and experience and it, the the way in which the um, memorial, as it's manifest, exists, it's on one side about conflict and the other about contemplation. And um, the notion is that you don't always need to be confronted, but some but memory is a good thing. Right, and um, sometimes that comes in of our, in our minds, and sometimes it goes out, but it's it's there to be recognized when when appropriate. Um, with regard to the L shape versus the U shape, I, I appreciate uh, the legibility issue. It's something that we've been grappling with in the context of, for all intents and purposes, in Western culture, you read left to right, um, and so trying to find a way that we could. Um, make uh, the soldier's journey a legible experience um, and to uh, uh, strike a balance between the invitation to confront and deal with the, the challenges, in particular with the shell shock uh, figure, which is the penultimate experience uh, within the le legibility of the memorial. Um, uh, we also want to practice or propose an aspect of matriculation that takes you out of the every day, brings you out across the water towards the legible uh, figurative component, uh, have it be read, and then um, uh, allow a procession back out that begins to place you back into the real world in such a way that uh, you can appreciate the sacrifices that were made in the context of, of that conflict. Um, it's part of the design process, we will continue to explore. Okay. Yes, Mr. Cash. So correct me if I'm wrong, but it seems like in these latest plans, but we keep focusing on the west side of the park, but the east side where the Pershing walls and the statues right now, it seems to me that it's pretty much now unchanged. I mean, we get rid of the kiosk and we put the, I actually like the, the treatment there where the kiosk is. I think it, there's a lot of possibilities of something there, but I feel like 
the Pershing side is actually one of the more underutilized sides of the park right now. I walk through there every day. I work in the Wilson building right across the street and I walk up those southeast stairs and I mean it's just you just feel like you're going through a wasteland and then you end up on this really big area. Yeah, uh, actually the, the photo. Well, so I walk up those stairs and you end up here. I mean, no one sits on, on that bench because you can't read the walls anyway. It's just very clunky. It's just not an inviting space at all. So I, I mean, I wonder, maybe this is kind of too high level, but I wonder if maybe we're not focusing enough on this side of what we could do with some things if now the intent has become to really preserve the west side. I just feel like there's a lot of space over here. You go over where the kiosk is now and there's, and actually behind the Pershing wall, if that wall straight ahead of us was gone, the grade there actually isn't all that bad. So you might even have some opportunities to reutilize a little bit of that in a way dead green space right now that exists behind that wall because the grading isn't really as rough as it is on the south side. Um, I know there's been a lot of talk about the grade on the south side in that berm, and I understand, I think, during Ms. Mr. Fliss's presentation, part of the, the rationale for this I wrote down was seclusion from the noisy streets. Pennsylvania Avenue is really not as noisy as it was back in 1980, because now that E Street's been closed off, most of that is, is actually parking for, for the city council and mayor's office and, and the Department of Commerce now. So I don't think we're ever really going to, unless you really blow up the whole thing and start again, I don't know if there's a lot you can do with that south side. It's just because I think the context has changed so much. But I mean, I really think there's a lot of opportunities over here on the sea side. And the only other thing I want to say about the west side, and looking at that wall, I feel like the several iterations that we've seen of the design, the placement of that wall pretty much seems to have come from where we're getting rid of the Zamboni parking lot. And we're blowing that up and kind of replacing that with a wall. But when I've walked through there, actually one of the more utilized sides of the park is along the 15th Street side. And I see a lot of people sitting on that plaza on the 15th Street side and a lot of those circular benches up there. And suddenly you're going to put this wall that will block your view from sitting up there on the, on the street level. You won't really be able to see the pool. You'll have the back of this memorial wall. It just seems like you, you actually kind of lose one of the nicer aspects of where people actually use the park right now, which is sitting there along the 15th Street side. So I just wonder if maybe there's... I mean, so it might be a lot of rethought, but I just feel like that wall has kind of been shoved against that, that 15th Street side because that was the original context where we were looking at when, um, I mean, several iterations ago. Maybe there's something more creative or realigning it, but um, I think that the backside of that wall and that one picture of kind of just like that notch where people are going to sit there, and I just think that it, it blocks off actually one of the nicer sides of the park. So uh, I know there's a lot there. I think that, that the design does look much better than some of the other iterations, but I think there's maybe still some more to think about on the east side, maybe better utilizing that. Thank you. One quick thing. Mm -hmm. When you come back, will you show us some elevations looking toward the south from inside the plaza? Sure. Yes, absolutely. That's what I was just, uh, following Mr. Cash's comment. I was just looking at the south side. Uh, there are no significant seating areas on the south side facing the... It's just stairs. It goes straight it's just the stairs, yeah. It dives down. Yeah, it's just the stairs there. Uh, there are actually those are, three there little are, tree there boxes three, there with yeah. the curved yeah, right um, seating right. areas. Blue is covering it, so yeah. These are actually the oh, okay. Right, right, right. Got it. And you can actually, when you're on Pennsylvania Avenue South, you can see people sitting up Perched. there. Perched. Yeah. So. Yeah. Got it. Thank you. Any other questions or comments for Mr. Rubin or Mr. Fliss? Thank you. We look forward to your next submission. My pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mike. Uh, yeah. Oh, we, we have to. Yeah, we have to approve the comments. Sorry. Let's <laughs> get into that. Uh, yes, yeah, right. Is there a motion on the EDR to approve the comments? I'm sorry. It's been moved Second. and seconded. Uh, any further discussion? Hearing none. All in favor of the EDR uh, as submitted, say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Thank you. All right, I'm with you again now. Agenda item 5B is to approve the final site development plans for a new security fence at Joint Base Meyer Henderson Hall. That's in Arlington and is brought to us by the Department of the Army. And Mr. Hart, welcome.
Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman and members of the Commission. The Army has submitted final site development plans for a new security fence at Joint Base Meyer Henderson Hall. As you may recall, this fence project was last at the Commission in May of this year. Staff has worked with the Army since that time in, a, in an effort to address the Commission's concerns with two of the gates that connect this base with Arlington National Cemetery. The Army has also proposed some minor changes to a third gate, and I'll describe these changes later on in this presentation. So as a refresher, this proposal is for a two mile long security fence shown here in yellow that will parallel an existing historic wall that currently separates Joint Base Meyer uh, Henderson Hall uh, from Ar Arlington National Cemetery. The Army noted the need for a security fence to complete the, the secure perimeter for the base, and you see the existing security fence uh, shown here in the, uh, the blue color. This presentation will uh, focus on design changes for the two of the proposed gates, uh, the Selfridge and Memorial Chapel gates, which the Commission commented on in May. Uh, the photos for these gates are shown here on the left. Um, and I'll discuss Selfridge first and then move to Memorial Chapel. And then finally, as I said, I'll describe the uh, Old Post Chapel uh, gate uh, design, which has changed since uh, you last saw it. So um, Selfridge Gate is located along the historic wall and is framed by two large stone piers you see in this photo. This entrance, this entrance is used by the old guard um, and other employees accessing the cemetery on a daily basis. Uh, it's important because it's one of the two gates uh, with stone piers um, along this historic wall. Um, you can see that, the, uh, that there's also the Baker's Creek Memorial on the left of this image. Um, and this honors the service members that lost their lives in an airplane crash during World War II. Um, I'll also point out that there is an existing sliding gate that you can't see, and this gate is actually on the uh, Arlington National Cemetery side, so the image on the left, uh, the smaller image, that's looking from the cemetery towards uh, the, the base. Um, and you see this existing gate, and that gate is actually going to be uh, removed as part of this project. So um, the Army's preliminary design proposal um, is shown here. Um, it included uh, these four-inch uh, metal posts uh, along the, uh, the, there was the fence um, at the gate itself. There were um, four-inch metal posts on either side um, of the gate. Um, they're identified here. Um, and uh, you can also see that there is a uh, sliding arm gate um, that was included in the, in the proposal. There wasn't any, um, uh, uh, landscaping or shrubs or anything that was uh, incorporated in here. Um, in May, the Commission requested that the Army consider the use of piers, posts, or other elements to uh, clearly frame the gates and explore additional design details that will help differentiate the gate, <coughs> differentiate the gate uh, from the proposed fence. So um, since May, the Army and staff have discussed a number of options for the gate, uh, including um, gate uh, type, gate location, material and height of the piers, or um, if you're not doing piers, maybe uh, changing the, the uh, width of the posts, um, as well as adding some lands in landscaping to address the Commission's comments. Um, placing a new gate within the existing stone piers um, uh, to minimize the visual impact would eliminate the redundancy, a gate within a gate. Um, uh, you have the two gates here. Um, however, the Army noted that since the historic wall is uh, the cemetery property, it's not able to, uh, to accomplish this. The Army also considered a swing, or, swing arm gate option. However, the design that met the Army security requirements was as industrial in character as this one and offered little benefits. The Army tried placing new stone piers at the gate as well, but um, these visually competed with the existing historic gate, uh, historic piers that uh, were behind it, and they blocked the views of the gate uh, of the piers as well. And finally, the army uh, explored placing different sized uh, posts, metal posts, um, at eight inches and six inches, um, as well as adding some landscaping uh, on both sides of the entrance to help frame the gate. Um, while staff found that the wider posts provided. Um, uh, really too much visual weight for the entrance, we did believe that the, uh, the landscaping helped to delineate the entrance and soften the industrial look of the gate. So this is what they are proposing now, um, which uh, 
uh, they have not changed the size of the, of the posts. Um, they're still four inch posts. They have included, incorporated uh, landscaping on either side of the gate. Um, and um, have also um, uh, removed the existing gate on the, uh, on the opposite side of the, uh, on the Arlington Cemetery side of the, uh, of the existing uh, piers. Um, so understanding the necessity of this project that the, the Army has stated, um, we find that the proposed approach to this, um, uh, to this gate minimizes, minimize posts or piers and add landscaping to screen the slide arm gate at this entrance is the best solution for reducing the gate's appearance and preserving, preserving views of the cemetery and historic wall. Um, and staff also supports the Army's intention to remove the existing uh, slide gate at the Arlington National Cemetery side of the historic wall, which would help to reduce the, uh, the clutter uh, at, this, uh, at this entrance. So next, um, we move to the Memorial Chapel Gate. Um, it is uh, typically used by the, by the public once a month on average to accommodate large funerals occurring at the cemetery, uh, excuse me, occurring at the Memorial Chapel, and they moved uh, through the gate to the cemetery. This uh, gate is very important because it is uh, very visible as it is very close to Carpenter Road, which you see here in the foreground. This road is the main north-south connector uh, for the base. So this was the preliminary design for the Memorial Chapel Gate. Uh, it included the slide arm uh, uh, gate that you saw at the Selfridge um, uh, images previously. And um, this uh, also includes the, uh, the four inch posts on either side of the, uh, of the gate. There, is, there was no landscaping that was um, in incorporated for the uh, preliminary design. So now the Army has proposed limited um, shrubs on both sides of the gate, similar to the Selfridge Gate, that will help to delineate the entrance and soften the, in in the industrial look of the, uh, the proposed slide arm gate. Um, again, we understand the, need for, the Army's need for these security measures, and staff is uh, supportive of this um, minimal addition. Um, and finally, while um, this wasn't, the, um, uh, wasn't part of the commission action, the Army uh, did commit to adding landscaping to the old post chapel entrance um, at, the, uh, at the May meeting. Um, here is a view of the preliminary design, which you see on the left, uh, with a side-by-side -side comparison with the uh, final design. And just so you can see some changes, uh, they've added in the uh, final design um, uh, a new curbing, which uh, incorporates a new landscaped area, which um, kind of goes around where that uh, where the fence is um, the, was previously uh, on the preliminary uh, site plan. And uh, that was just showing you the new slide arm gate is. Um, and this is an image. It's very somewhat dark, but um, it includes the uh, new landscaping on the right hand side. Um, which is which will be in front of where the uh, the slide arm gate would be during uh, the day, which is um, it will be in the open position during the day, and you can see the new curbing um, that uh, incorporates that whole landscaped uh, area on the right hand side of the slide. So, um, therefore, it is the executive director's recommendation that the commission approve the final site development plans for a proposed new fence between Joint Base Meyer Henderson Hall and Arlington Cemetery. Note that the um, Army has explored several design refinements for their proposed gates in response to the Commission's May 2018 requests. Find, the Arm find that the Army considered a single swing gate uh, for the Selfridge entrance. However, it, is, uh, it still requires the same industrial looking crossbars as a slide arm gate and cannot be placed between the piers. Find that the options to enhance the entryways with wider posts or piers result in additional visual clutter. Um, com uh, compete with the existing historic resources and emphasize the new security measures. Also find that the proposed approach to minimize posts or piers and add landscaping is the best solution for reducing the gate's appearance and preserving views to, of the cemetery and historic wall. And then finally notes that the Army will conclude the uh, both Section 106 and NEPA uh, processes shortly. Um, NCPC does not have a, an independent um, uh, uh, responsibility for uh, Section 106 or NEPA for the project. That concludes our presentation, and I'm happy, happy to answer any questions. Uh, there are representatives from the Army to uh, answer questions as well. Thank you, Mr. Hart. Mr. Uh, Rhodes. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I, I would just share one comment, and that is uh, I know there's an appreciation uh, by the uh, Commission on the requirement that is trying to be addressed here, and I know there are many thoughts and views of the big fence on the side. What I would like to remind um, is that uh, 
the impacted view that has been represented here that they're trying to work on addressing is on the Army side, on our contained side. On the public side, Arlington National Cemetery, it, it maintains a character and in fact takes away one of the fences that was impacting some of the columns, uh, but it, it really is a secondary effect there because you're seeing the Arlington National Cemetery's uh, stone wall, a brick wall, and all that area is being maintained and not impacted. It's only a secondary impact on that for the public. The impact is on the armies who is trying to address a need that they have on their controlled and contained side in there. So I would just add that uh, we didn't really have pictures that showed it from the other side. We did in the last presentation last time, so it was an opportunity to see that. Um, so I just want to remind of that aspect of it. So thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Rhodes. Mr. Gallus. I want to add to that that as it relates to the old post chapel gate, I think, uh, which is seen by a lot of public, right? It's highly visible. And I think the combination of, of, of beauty and elegance with the need for security, we found a way to make it better. And I think it is better, much better. Um, because for the most part, what the public will see during the the kind of daytime hours is that gate open, and we are essentially hiding it for the most part. I mean, trying to with landscaping, and I, I think that that's an improvement. But the question is, how much do we have to abandon beauty and elegance uh, in exchange for critical security? Is I think what's on the table. And, and as it relates to Selfridge, I think we've proven that a, a beauty and elegance is gone uh, from our minds. Um, and I guess I'm, I'm disappointed because I know uh, everybody, everybody, all the stakeholders appreciate the, what that gate feels like as you approach it, it really is something powerful, you know, as we went there to see it. It, it moves you. And it won't move you anymore. And nothing's going to move there. It's constipated, I guess you could say. Um, <laughs> but um, I, I, I really, I don't have a solution. I kind of just am sad about that. Um, the other thing that I'd like to just ask about uh, first of all there's a question because we're replacing the parking lot where is the parking lot replaced is that the old post chapel parking lot or what the, the, the parking lot is actually to the very south of this whole um area it's actually uh i don't think i have an image here but uh, this image um this is this is where the old post chapel is where are we is, i can't is, see oh, i'm sorry i'm sorry where are you, Can you... <coughs> Okay, they're not seeing this on my on the screen. Um, how about I do that? Okay, no, I can't. It's my the okay. thing is frozen. But okay. in the middle of this image, um, there's kind of like a uh, uh, you see where the the these these areas are that are kind of the three or four areas down here that are kind of re almost rectilinear looking. Uh -huh. um, just above, just just south of that, or just just to the north of that, or yeah. just above that. Is an area that is that, that oh, there it's not. <laughs> now we can't see it at all. It's it's on the very southern end of this uh, of the of the entire project. It's actually on uh, Henderson Hall portion of the base. It's nowhere near any of the um, uh, uh, old post chapel or any of that. Okay. They're re they're really replacing foot uh, parking spaces that they have re removed as part of the fence project. And I kind of described that earlier on. Um, in, in previous present, uh, presentations, I, I thought it would be helpful just to focus on the issues that. Okay, I appreciate that. And and oops, we're on the wrong one here. Okay. I wonder if you could go back to that aerial <coughs> image when you get us when you get to it, please. Um, well, so so this is easier because it's okay. uh, you you can see where the um, where this the words kind of new security fence are um, just to this just in the very southern portion of this. Is where the uh, that new parking area is, the area that you were that we were talking about. I don't know if you can see this. Yeah, we can um, see. That's where the old post chapel is, which is uh, up here, kind of mid mid part okay. of the uh, of the new fence. Okay, okay. So, um, I actually, can you find that <laughs> photograph that you were just looking at the other aerial? 
for a second. I'm going to, my last, there we go. And can you point, where is the wall today? So, so um, the wall itself, it follows along here. Can you use your red pointer? Hold on. Or I somebody. Sorry, I, don't know, I don't know what you guys are seeing, so I don't know well, what, uh, I guess it's seeing, not seeing anything. Can someone just point to it? I'd like to it's, see. It's a long my 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 question has to do with the trees. Okay, so those trees that up toward the top that you were just pointing to, are beautiful pin oaks. I think uh, we were walking under them. They're you know great mature trees, and um, I don't know. I know we're concerned more about car intrusion or a car bomb or something like that maybe but I you know I did point out I think at our last meeting and when we were at the site that it'd be pretty easy to just hop over the fence by climbing the tree and I'm wondering has there been any further thought about that in any of your design strategies I can ask the uh, the the team from uh, from the army to come up to respond to that but they were, they were looking at uh, having some, there's going to be some patrol that actually happens, uh, as well as some uh, security cameras that will be, uh, you know, trained in this area so that you could see if there was something that was uh, coming over the fence or trying to come over the fence. Um, but they were really trying to keep the kind of that casual person from thinking that they want to walk through there, that this isn't a, a location to go in. But I'll, I'll let... Um, uh, them describe that a little bit. Afternoon, so. Brett and I with Jacobs, uh, landscape architect for the team. Uh, the If you recall, earlier in the design process, we talked about fence alignment alternatives. And we tried several different ones, some that were very linear, some that had rectangular jogs, some that had very, what I'll call noticeable and radical <coughs> veers in them. And a lot of that was done to preserve the vegetation. We also then realized that the, the security aspect that Carlton just mentioned is in fact going to be 100% covered video monitoring CCTV along the entire stretch. So along with the fence construction, there's been designed by the Public Works Department at the base, the security system and also new lighting along there as well that is all being done in conjunction with the new fencing. Any other questions or comments? Yes, yeah. uh, Mr. Dixon. Uh, the, the gate at the Henderson Hall gate, is that accessible by, by folks who are, have already been admitted into the Henderson Hall area? And would it be by foot, only by foot or not by car? Or, is it going to be? Can you get into the cemetery from there? Are you are you talking Are you talking about the uh, the There's a gate that is. You said by Henderson Hall. Well, there's there's one as I look at the arrow on your on your illustration, that seems to be in the Henderson Hall area. I'm just wondering whether you'll be able to ex access the cemetery it, through there. It might be the south gate you're referring Maybe to. It's, it's the gate. The gate he has the arrow on there. Not the chapel gate, but the Suffrage gate. Both, but both of those are accessible now and will, rem will remain accessible. They will. For, yes. the, for anyone in there could go into the cemetery, correct? If they. Oh, uh, well, the, the memorial gate, like Carlton mentioned, is not for the public. To it's, the yes, cemetery. it's not going to be used. Now, another advantage of having that in the proximity to Old Post Chapel Gate is if there was a large ceremony still in Old Post or. They did have an issue with gate operation. You have a second point of entry that's on the same perimeter road system inside the cemetery. I understand. Itself. Thank you. Any additional discussion? The question before us is the approval of site of the. largely an internal policy document for the agency and as such will not be formally reviewed by the commission. Uh, however, the document will provide some helpful context regarding uh, NPS transportation priorities, uh, which may inform several uh, NCPC core responsibilities, including the federal capital improvements program, the transportation element of the context. 
I know when you think about transportation planning, the park service probably doesn't come to the top of your mind. So I'm going to walk you through sort of an overview of the process we went through uh, for our long-range transportation plan, uh, give you a sense of the assets that are incorporated, um, walk you through our key issues that we evaluated during the process on the NCPC, um, WMATA, all the local um, plant transportation agencies, all the local planning agencies. We held a scenario planning network um, uh, workshop to sort of kick things off and talk about things in a general sense in terms of forming our issues um, with our stakeholders. Um, we had about 44 different participants across all of our stakeholders, um, and I have included a list of uh, several of those. Um, we, after our scenario planning, we did a number of internal workshops. Uh, and then reported out to external workshops to get the feedback along the way, not just at the beginning and at the end. So the first part of our process is what do we have? What are the assets that we have? Um, so we went through and inventoried everything um, that had anything to do with transportation um, and came up with where are they, what are their condition, um, and what do we know about them, and looked at them not only from where they are and what they are, but um, how much do they cost to replace and what is the deferred maintenance associated with those so that we are getting an accurate picture of not only what our assets are, but what is the financial obligations associated with them. So then knowing what everything is and where it is, what are the key issues? Um, so with our stakeholders, we developed um, a, a whole list of what the key issues could be. Um, and then we took those back to our superintendents um, and leadership um, and did a survey to walk through those issues to sort of field test the issues that we were hearing from our partners and our stakeholders. Where does, do our superintendents and our leadership consider those the same issues? And this is sort of how it came out, probably not unexpected. We develop a vision, um, which, you know, transportation for the Park Service is, is a tough one. And when you're talking about um, how those are connecting to our spaces, um, things that we don't have control of. Um, and we came up with some key pieces. We want it to be mission focused, so it's not that just point A to point B, um, but the visitor experience piece I was alluding to. Um, financially sustainable, so that we're building what works, but it's also low maintenance and operations. It's interconnected, not only within the park, but into adjacent networks, um, and it's equitable. There's multiple modes, and it's safe for people to get there. From that, we developed a, a range of goals over these five program areas that look at asset management, safety, security, transportation, finance, resource protection, and visitor use and experience. Um, and then from these, we developed objectives, strategies, and performance measures. And, and so not to take you through five goals with a bazillion objectives and strategies, walk you through how this sort of plays out for one goal. Um, which is visitor experience. Um, so you see we, in, in this particular goal, we have four objectives, uh, two strategies to get to those objectives, and then about four different ways we're going to measure that. And how that sort of plays out when you're thinking about it in terms of projects, one of the pieces that we needed to understand an objective is how are people getting to our parks? Where, what is that first and that last mile? Um, we didn't have that information. We didn't know that information. So one of the projects that's already been initiated out of the LRTP is a transportation visitor use study. Um, and we have distributed um, over 2,100 surveys um, and six of our parks that were representative of the region um, to give us a sense of what are the barriers that people have in getting to our parks, getting around our parks, and then getting back home we'll use that information to meet some of our visitor use goals. Maybe you need to explain to folks the uh, code for our parks. Oh, sorry, I didn't even think. <laughs> so the, the six representative parks are Prince William Forest Park, Antietam, Manassas, George Washington Memorial Parkway, Rock Creek, um, and CNO Canal National Historical Park. Sorry, we have shorthand for everything. <laughs> So you, don't, you can develop all the goals and strategies that you want, but if you can't actually implement them and think about them strategically um, and pay for them, then you're, you pretty much have a document that sits on the shelf. 
Um, so a really key piece of this is looking at investment strategy. Um, how are we going to fund whatever we need to do? Um, so the first step in doing that is, is looking at what, what money comes <coughs> in, which um, comes in to us from a variety of different um, ways and, and totals about $34.3 million of funds that we get in for transportation assets. Can I, before you flip on that one, I yes. just want to emphasize this number, $34 million every year for all of the stuff that we have to maintain and note for folks that we just um, awarded a contract a few months ago for $225 million for Arlington Memorial Bridge. And I so, should caveat that the numbers you'll see does not include Memorial Bridge. Right. But it, it just gives you a sense of the scale, right? When we have a problem like Memorial Bridge, our normal assets are not sufficient to come anywhere close to tackling that. Can you briefly tell us what the title, what those fees are? Sure, I'll try. <laughs> Uh, Title 23 and John, um, actually, we started this together. <laughs> I was going to say, there's a slide on here that shows, that gives a breakdown okay, you, of what those are. But, but he, I think you mean specifically what those codes mean. Yeah, so yeah. Title so title 15 and 16 is like oh, rec fee. fee. Right. And then, yeah. Yep, I got it. Thank you. Thank you back. So, once you, that was what we were get in. This is what goes out. So where are we spending that $34.3 million on? Um, so looking at where it's going. And then um, looking at what the gap is in terms of condition. Um, and so our gap is about $50 million um, based on uh, the historic average that we come, that of money that we get in, uh, what we forecast that we need to keep things in a good working order. Um, and then um, also throwing in O and M, not just projects, and then our gap is about fifty million dollars. So what do you do with that? Um, you have to develop a strategy to balance it. Question: yes. Since your nightmare boss has already interrupted you a few times, um, mm -hmm. the the so when you say is that an annual gap, or yes, what? And so you have a fifty million dollar deficit every year which I assume accumulates beyond that yes so what if can you estimate your cumulative gap well the the entire um, deferred maintenance bill for the National Park Service is somewhere upwards of 11 billion dollars right moment. but I mean can you of slice which, out the transportation of which uh, I think more than half was it 60 70 percent was related to uh, transportation and roads and other infrastructure so please continue thank you sufficiently <laughs> <laughs> yeah um, so you have to come up with an, an investment strategy because you really have to plan well for what you're getting um, so together with our stakeholders um, we took a look at a large range of strategies and I'm going to just jump to this one um, where we looked at, and, and on here I'll, I'll spare you all the coding for PCR and FCI and BHI, but these are all related to conditions for different transportation assets. The goal of looking at the strategy was to balance the condition of the asset itself with cost and the bottom line amount of money. And not just for assets that we have now, but also to have a little bit for future assets because at the time of this planning we had just completed a paved trail plan with lots of objectives and projects that we wanted to implement. Um, and we needed some of this funding to help us with that. So setting aside a little tiny bit for new projects and using that, and the goals with that new money would be that it would be partnership projects or projects where we could leverage different amounts of funding. Um, uh, and looking at the status quo. If we did everything as we do today, here's so one column is the current condition, one column is, if we did everything as we did today, spending the money that the way we did today, what does that do to condition in terms? Um, so red is bad, yellow is in the middle, and green is good. We looked at about six or seven different strategies to help balance out condition and funding and needs for O&M and new projects. Um, and we developed a strategy that we refer to as the road bridge balance. So looking at our high priority roads, which are the, the, the roads that are in uh, those upper classes, 
Um, so those are the parkways, the big roads, the high transportation needs, and prioritizing our funding across the classes and with the bridges that connect those roads. Having, some, having enough O&M to cover our integrated costs to balance out our capital spending um, and have that little bit for additional projects. Um, so this uh, funding strategy is what we will use moving forward um, to evaluate our project priorities. So between the goals and the objectives and this financial strategy is what we'll use to um, figure out what projects will be funded moving forward. Can I ask a question? Yes. So things like Rock Creek Park where you just redid roadbeds and things like that, was that part of this normal budget as well or were those also special procurements? I think that was a combination of in-house funding and special procurements. Yeah, well, um, <laughs> there are a number of, of financial um, resources that can be applied to a project like that. Um, generally speaking, the majority of the funding for a beach drive reconstruction, which is still ongoing, um, it, it came from that $34 million a year. We can, what, what happens, I mean, that's an, an average. And what can happen is that we can pile up some money from year to year and then be able to spend it. Or we can borrow money from future projects. Or we can borrow money from other regions so that we can, you know, we might actually get $50 million one year and then $20 million the next, something like that, to be able to pool money together to handle projects of that scope. Unfortunately, that those they do negatively affect our ability to do other things. I mean, we were held up on um, some rehab work on the George Washington Mall Parkway for a long time, like right by the interchange with uh, the 14th Street Bridge. It took a long time to get that one done, and it was in terrible shape because we were, you know, borrowing Peter to pay Paul and um, trying to cobble together the money. Um, one of the worst examples of this, unfortunately, was Fort DuPont Drive and Fort Davis Drive through Fort DuPont, which we just awarded a contract for, and it'll get finished in about six months. Um, but we were starving that road for a long time um, because of the other drains. Uh, uh, Arlington Memorial Bridge, quick, you know, the, 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 the emergency fixes that we had to do on the bridge. Um, some of the other repair projects that we had to do that took precedence. We finally held on to enough money to get that one done. So we're constantly borrowing forward, borrowing back, borrowing from other regions. Um, occasionally, we there are grant programs that we can tap. That's how we were able to pull a lot of the money for Arlington Memorial Bridge. We also pull a lot of that from the Park Service's regular line item construction budget. Uh, so, in other words, we were taking money out that would have otherwise gone to visitor centers and other projects and in, in parks in order to get to that. So, just because it was such a it was so out of scale with the normal transportation program. Mr. Chairman, uh, I noticed that when you did your earliest survey, you spoke of earlier, there was no mention of the Anacostia Park. Is there a reason that wasn't included in the process? Oh, for the visitor survey? Yes. So the transportation, we couldn't, we didn't have enough funds to do uh, the survey in every park right. of the region. So we picked a representative set of parks. Um, and uh, we only wanted one park from the district, and we wanted one park in the district with a heavy transportation need. Anacostia Drive isn't quite the same as Rock Creek, right. um, so we wanted to sort of get that experience from a district park. Um, there are visitor use surveys going on in Anacostia that are not transportation related, that are visitor use related. The reason I ask uh, is a lot of focus on that side of the river in terms of developers, people coming in, et cetera. And uh, a lot of the funding for your parks nationally have come from private sector people, have donated or done things. And I don't know whether or not there's any connection between those folks who are interested in outside of the river and the park and your needs to do something with the park to make it a greater amenity. Uh, it may, it may be a value. I don't know. Maybe it would show up in another survey and not the transportation surveys. I think it would. I mean, we when it comes to Anacostia Park, there's a lot of partnerships that we're working on to do a variety of different things from park improvements to programming to research um, across the city with anyone. We're always 
willing to have a conversation about what we can do with another partner. Yeah, I don't think the rail there is uh, anything that you would look at, but that CNA, CSX oh, line no. is back there is a monster problem. But yeah, that's not park service. That's uh, yeah, ours, I, I, thankfully. I, I don't think they know who it is. That's one of the problems. They can't seem to find out who owns it and who controls it. Anyhow, that's another discussion. I want to be clear. Uh, in Rock Creek Park, are the bridges DC's responsibility and the roads, the park service responsibilities? It, it, I asked you once before because yeah. I was concerned about one of the bridges uh, that was falling apart and, and it was construction work being done on it. I said, well, you're all doing a great job. And you said, well, it's really the city, DC's responsibility. So what's the deal it's, on it's that? A, it's a mixture. I mean, some of the roads are, are the city's and some of them are, are ours. And right. the same is true with the bridges. I mean, the bridge right before the tunnel, just south of the tunnel. Yes. Uh, that's ours, and that was recently reconstructed, and we're adding a pedestrian bridge there. We also tap, um, you know, we, we do make use of some of the funds that are available from the district, particularly you know, when it comes to trail bridges and trail reconstructions and things like that. So we, we work very much hand in hand. Yeah. We often have to issue permits to the district so that they can fix their roads that are bounded on both sides by our right. property. Um, it's, it's not so simple as to say the roads are ours, the bridges are theirs, or anything like that. It's I mean, I noticed in your discussion of funding, there was no mention of, I didn't, maybe it was one of those acronyms I didn't recognize, but the D.C. involvement, I guess they're involved in some of the help with this terrible financial problem you've had. A absolutely, and again, they, you know, particularly when it comes to al alternate transportation, so uh, trails and, and pedestrian facilities, things like that, uh, <coughs> there are, there, the city gets money through the grants that they get from the federal government that can be used to build trail facilities on our property and that happens yeah. on a regular basis so again we work hand in hand on things sometimes the you know there are monies that come from the the district's um, transportation federal funds yep. that have been reallocated to us that happened with our uh, Arlington Memorial Bridge uh, it also happened for, with funds from Virginia yeah. Neither the state of or the Commonwealth of Virginia or the District of Columbia were particularly happy about that, but the Congress did that without our asking them to. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to help raise get us get it because all, often as we some people don't recognize the involvement or the yeah. contribution the district makes to things. Absolutely, they, and they think we kind of you know, but we are involved and we do something. For for another example, on the Eleventh Street Bridge reconstruction that occurred a few years ago right um, some land was needed from the Park Service and there was also their impacts on the Park Service land and we did eventually get some uh, compensation from that it mostly I think it's primarily or exclusively federal funds but it was funds that were allocated for that project but we're getting a couple million dollars to do some work in Anacostia Park unfortunately it took until now yeah. to get the agreement and to get the money we may not actually have the money yet but any, any day now. November. We're going to get the money. Um, and that'll go to improvements in the park. I noticed also that uh, this transportation discussion you're having <coughs> may touch upon the, the land that was given to, for uh, home, for, for the Coast Guard and for Homeland Security, that, that space uh, that the land was given up from, from the park in Anacostia. The money that was, that was <coughs> given to the Park Service was supposedly going to be used to help with the park in that area. And is that anything? Has that been resolved yet, or is that still up there? Yeah. We have um, we got three hundred and fifty-eight million. Is that what it was? What did we get for Shepherd Parkway? Shepherd Parkway. Shepherd Parkway. Yes. Four hundred thirty-two thousand. Four hundred thirty-two thousand. Oh. Sorry, did I say million? Yes. Oh, oops. I wish it was number. I wish it was million. I got. You know, <laughs> it's been a long day, and it's only <laughs> two o'clock. Um, no, yeah, we got four hundred some thousand, and that's being allocated primarily to the what is known as parklands. But that stem section of Shepherd Park. Well, yeah, well, that's part, Shepherd, that park land there. Yeah. yeah, we'll get some of that. I would hope. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> that's you. the plan. So next steps. Um, we are about wrap, we are done with the document itself, and it's currently being printed. Uh, we plan to put it out at the end of October. Um, as John mentioned, um, it is not a document for public comment because it's more of an inter internal strategic planning document, um, but we will be putting it out to share with the public um, uh, by the end of October. So I don't know if there's any other questions. <laughs> <laughs> any additional questions for Ms. Stidham? Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Very good. Nice very good.
that is uh, the end of our agenda. We had a happily short meeting today. Thank you for your attention. We had two good, two good items and a good information presentation. Um, we will see you in a month. Thank you. And again, uh, Sally Barnes, welcome. We're glad you're here. Yeah. 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 Thanks so much. We are adjourned.